government unveils 20 billion ringgit stimulus package over COVID-19 impact. Dun Mahadev agrees to be Bursatu chairman again. Good evening, I'm Jessica Lee. Welcome to News on 2. Interim Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahade Mohamad today unveiled the most awaited economic stimulus package worth 20 billion ringgit to minimize and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the country's economy. The strategies outlined under economic stimulus package will be based on three main thrusts, namely addressing impact of COVID-19, catalyzing people-based growth and encouraging quality investments. Pakis ransangan ekonomi yang bernilai 20 bilion ringgit ini ditunjangi oleh tiga strategi seperti berikut. Strategi pertama menangani impact COVID-19. Strategi kedua memangkin pertumbuhan berterusan. Ber, ber, berteraskan rakyat dan strategi ketiga menggalakkan pelaburan berkualiti Speaking when presenting the stimulus package from Putrajaya, which was carried live over RTM, the interim prime minister said Bank Negara Malaysia will provide a 2 billion ringgit special assistance guarantee facility to SMEs at a rate of 3.75%. He also said that Bank Simpanan Nasional will allocate 200 million ringgit for a micro credit facility at a rate of 4%. Malaysian Airports Holdings Berhad, meanwhile, will reduce rentals for airport premises, aircraft landing and parking charges to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the airline companies. Meanwhile, the government will also ensure the continuation of public investments and accelerate the implementation of developments. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir also announced some incentives as an appreciation to civil servants who have been the frontliners in tackling the COVID-19 outbreak. Kerajaan akan memberi allowance khas sebanyak RM400 sebulan kepada doktor serta kaki tangan perubatan dan RM200 kepada immigration dan kaki tangan lain yang terlibat. Bantuan allowance khas ini berkuat kuasa Februari 2020 hingga wabak ini berakhir. Now also announced was a one-off payment of 600 ringgit to registered taxi and tour bus drivers, tour guides and trishore riders who were also affected from this outbreak. Now the Premier also announced a digital, the interim Premier also announced a digital voucher worth of 100 ringgit per passenger for domestic tourists to be used for domestic flights, trains and accommodation at registered hotels. Now, the interim prime minister also projected Malaysia's economic growth at between 3.2% and 4.2% this year amid the global economic scenario and COVID-19 impacts. Berikutan scenario ekonomi global dan impak COVID-19. Pertumbuhan ekonomi negara bagi tahun 2020 diunjurkan dalam julat 3.2% sehingga 4.2%. Saya yakin pelaksanaan pakej ini akan membolehkan ekonomi negara meningkat kepada tahap tertinggi dalam julat tersebut. As a result of the stimulus package injected by the government today, Malaysia's fiscal deficit is estimated to grow up to 3.4% of gross domestic product from its original forecast of 3.2%. Now, the interim premier noted that the government have emphasized on prudence with respect to its fiscal position. On another note, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad today agreed to return as the Bursatu chairman. Now, this was confirmed by Bursatu Secretary-General Datuk Marzuki Yahya. 
Datuk Marzuki Yahya was also quoted as saying that other details will be updated later. It was noted that on Monday, Tun Dr. Made resigned as the Prime Minister and also Bursatu Chairman. Following that, Bursatu leaders rejected his resignation as Chairman and urged him to return to lead the party and the country. And moving on to Johor, after a meeting with 54 state assemblymen yesterday, Sultan of Johor, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar said 28 of them voted to form a new coalition, while the other 26 voted for Pakatan Harapan state government. His Majesty then ordered for the new coalition to nominate a Menteri Besar before state exco members can be appointed. In a statement issued by the Johor Palace, Sultan Ibrahim had ordered for the formation of a state government to ensure the state administration runs smoothly. All 54 state assemblymen were present at Bukit Timbalan, Johor Bahru between 3 to 5 p.m. after being summoned by His Majesty yesterday to determine the majority in the state assembly. Only Datuk Sri Salahuddin Ayub and Maslan Bujang, both assemblymen from Simpang Jeram and Putri Wangsa, could not attend the meeting with the Sultan. Now, Datuk Sri Mukris Mahathir will remain as Kedah Menteri Besar through the unified support of Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia, Bersatu, and Pakatan Harapan, PH State Assemblyman. Pakatan and Bersatu reps also agreed to maintain status quo of the present state government. Datuk Sri Mukri said the decision was presented to the Sultan of Kedah, Sultan Salahuddin Badlisha, during an audience with the ruler this morning. <laughs> Sehubungan itu, kami Kerajaan Negeri Kedah meminta rakyat supaya meletakkan kepercayaan sepenuhnya kepada kemampuan pentadbiran ini untuk menjalankan tanggungjawab berkhidmat demi negeri dan rakyat. Kami juga berharap rakyat bertenang dan bersikap rasional kerana pentadbiran kerajaan di Kedah tidak terjejas oleh perkembangan di peringkat pusat. Ayat itu... The state is now administered by a Bursatu PH government consolidating 19 out of 36 state seats in a simple majority. The preparations ahead of the first meeting of the third session of the 14th Parliament 2020, which is expected to convene on 9th of March, is going on as usual. Nevertheless, Dewan Rakyat Speaker Tan Sri Muhammad Arif Muhammad Yusuf said it will still depend on the current political development in the country. Dari segi parlimen kami memang bersedia lah Tapi kita menunggu lah Berita Nantilah Kita tahu pun tak tahu apa yang sedang berlaku Jadi kita tunggu lah sabar sikit Dalam masa yang terdekat Mungkin Ia akan menjadi jelas Dan kalau saya ada maklumat Berkaitan dengan perjalanan parlimen Saya akan beritahu lah he added that the current composition and the sitting position of the Dayan Rakia will also differ based on the country's political landscape. He was speaking to the media after Datuk Muhammad Alamin took his oath of office as the new Kimani's MP in the Dayan Rakia. Datuk Muhammad defeated Parti Warisan Sabah or Warisan Candid in the parliamentary by-election on 18th of January. A police inspector was charged at the Ipoh Sessions Court in Perak with four charges of receiving bribery of 6,000 ringgit six years ago. The accused, Sharu Zama Muhammad Adam, 38, however, pleaded not guilty and claimed trial to the charges after they were read before Judge S. Indra Nehru. According to the first charge, the accused, who was working as an investigative officer at the Ipoh Police Headquarters, had received a bribe of 1,000 ringgit from an individual that was investigated under Section 324 of the Penal Code. He is also accused of receiving 500 ringgit from another individual as an encouragement for the man to be released. Both offences were made at the Ipoh Police Headquarters at 2.10pm and 5pm on the 8th of May 2014. The accused is also charged for receiving 1,500 ringgit from the same man via a telegraphic bank transfer into his account at the bank in Kuala Pilah Negeri Sembilan at 6.49pm of the same day. The last charge read described that the accused accepted a bribe of 3,000 ringgit from the same man via a cash deposit machine at a bank in Sibilin at about 12.01pm on the 14th of May 2014. All charges were made under Section 165 of the Penal Code.
Prosecution was managed by Deputy Public Prosecutor Nurul Wadiha Jalaluddin, while the accused was represented by lawyers Muhammad Sharula Khan Nawabzada Khan and Muhammad Aizad Fakri. The judge then set 27th of March for case remission. Now, 2019 Sijil Pelajaran Malaysia or SPM results will be announced next Thursday, 5th of March. Ministry of Education, MOE, in a statement today said the candidates can obtain their results from their respective schools from 10 a.m. on that day. The statement also said that for private candidates, their results will be sent through post or they can contact the State Education Department where they registered for their examinations. Candidates can also check their results through SMS by typing in their examination registration number and sending it to MySMS15888 with the service available from 10 a.m. on the 5th of March until 6 p.m. the following day. A total of 416,416 candidates registered to sit for the examination last year, which was held at 3,313 examination centres nationwide. The Ministry of Economic Affairs has allocated 15 million ringgit to the Bumiputra Agenda Steering Unit or Taraju for the implementation of the Bumiputra Entrepreneur Startup Scheme or SUPERB this year. The scheme provides grants of up to 500,000 ringgit to help Bumiputra youth entrepreneurs aged between 21 and 40 years old. Taraju Chief Executive Officer Mama Silmi Abdurrahman said they are at the final stage of planning and applications are expected to open at the end of April. The introduction of this program together with a few other approaches was an initiative of Taraju to increase the creativity and competitiveness of youth Bumiputra entrepreneurs. Kita juga tidak lupa kepada golongan belia, kan? terutama yang lepasan uh, uh, SPM. SPM kan? Kita sedang bekerjasama dan berunding dengan MARA contohnya untuk memasuki bidang-bidang tradisional tapi kita men, uh, kita improve kan? seperti hipsters bubble He was speaking to RTM after meeting 150 entrepreneurs at the East Coast in Kota Baru Since the superb business pitching sessions began in 2014 Taraju has identified and supported 227 Bumiputra youth startups nationwide and of the total 17 are from the East Coast Meanwhile, in an attempt to narrow the income and economic disparity, especially among the B40 and M40 groups, Taraju also allocated 7.5 million ringgit to the Bumiputra Entrepreneur Development Fund, or DPUB, for the East Coast this year. To implement this program, which focuses on developing community projects for the B40 group in rural areas, Taraju will collaborate with local universities, including University of Malaysia Kelantan, UMK, University Malaysia Trungano, UMT, University Science Malaysia, USM, and University Malaysia Pahang, UMP. Coming up next, South Korea reports 334 new coronavirus cases, postpones military drills with the United States. Now, the medical team at the Armed Forces Malaysian Field Hospital in Cox Bazar, Bangladesh, has been entrusted to be involved in plannings to control the outbreak of COVID-19, especially involving the Rohingya ethnic group. Op straight, uh, Op Star Light 4 Commander Colonel Dr. Sharil Nizam Abdul Jalil said he was working with the country's health team to monitor and take the necessary preventive measures to control the outbreak. Okay, setakat ini di Bangladesh dan juga khususnya di Cox Bazar masih tidak ada kes COVID-19. Namun begitu kita sentiasa bersedia dan kita juga terlibat dengan segala perancangan untuk apa ni mengawal wabak COVID-19 di sana. Kita bekerjasama dengan pihak kesihatan tempatan dan setakat ini alhamdulillah kita masih tidak ada kes dan kita sentiasa bersedialah untuk menangani kes jikanya ada. Colonel Dr. Sharil Nizam was met at the ceremony to welcome the return of the Op Star Like 4 team at Wisma Puwira in Kuala Lumpur. The Malaysian Field Hospital became operational by the end of 2017. 
To date, the Malaysian Field Hospital has treated over 97,000 patients and performed over 3,520 surgeries that had saved thousands of lives in the country. Let's take a look at the local story. Football Association of Malaysia, FAM's president, Dato Hamidi Mohamed Amin, said current political development will not affect the association and state sport leadership. Now, he stressed that the national body's obligation to the teams remained unchanged. He said FIFA's main vision is for the sport to be free of any political influence and it is FAM's responsibility to upkeep. Tetapi sesiapa yang masih lagi memegang jawatan presiden, dia bertanggungjawab. Itu je. Kalau ada perubahan, presiden baru akan bertanggungjawab. Saya akan approach presiden baru tu ini tanggungjawab dia. Kalau terjadi. Jadi maksud dia, um, kita jelas uh, bahawa bola sepak ni, kalau kita tengok FIFA dengan uh, mana FAM atau AFC, uh, number one dalam statute dia, uh, bola sepak ni terkecuali daripada politik, agama dan bangsa. Meanwhile, Dato Hamidin warned M-League teams that they must comply with the Economic Control Plan, or ECP, introduced this year to eradicate debts in local football. He said the implementation of the ECP is meant to put an end to financial problems by urging teams to follow their budget and plan well for the upcoming years. And that concludes News on 2 for this evening. In our top story, government unveils 20 billion ringgit stimulus package over COVID-19 impact. Join us again for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.